Got another question here on the year 13 rate of reaction topic. So as always, the link to the question is in the description of the video. Okay, so part A, we've got to use the graph to basically calculate the value for K. Um, the chemist used a hydrogen concentration of that. So what we need to find is the uh, concentration or find a concentration and a rate from the graph. Um, so the reason I've gone for this concentration of 5 times 10 to the minus 4, see I've highlighted those because that would be a common mistake I reckon, people forgetting uh, the 10 to the minus 4s. But anyway, the reason I've gone for that one is because it's bang on a line across, okay? So the initial rate when the concentration of NO is 5 times 10 to the minus 4 is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So to two significant figures and in standard form, it's 8.4 times 10 to the 4. Units wise, we've got moles per decimeter cube per second on the top. And we've got three lots of moles per decimeter cubed on the bottom. So they'll cancel down to dm to the 6, mole to the minus 2, seconds to the minus 1. Moving on to part B. So we told the reactions first order with respect to hydrogen. That means the rate is going to be directly proportional to the concentration so at the lower temperature you get this less steep straight line graph through the origin as at the higher temperature we get a much steeper straight line graph through the origin and obviously if you increase the temperature the rate of the reaction will increase and therefore the rate constant will increase because it's a it's a measure of the rate of the reaction so k increases with temperature would be fine for that Part C moves on to continuous monitoring to show order. So we're told that the hydrogen is first order by continuous monitoring. So the graph, the concentration time graph is going to look like that. So it's going to have to be curved. How would you use the graph to, to show that it's first order? It's the constant half-life confirms the first order relationship. So part D now, a tricky mechanism question. So first thing I'll do is work out the equation for step three. So the way I've done it is I've worked out the sum of steps one and two. That's given me that. The N2O2s cancel. And then I'm just comparing this with the overall equation to see what I still need and what needs to cancel. So what do we still need? Well, we've got two NOs, we need two NOs, that's fine. We need two H2s, we've only got one, so we need another hydrogen on the left. In terms of products, we don't have any N2, so we need an N2, and we need another H2 on the right, because we need two in the overall equation, we've only got one, and we need that N2 to cancel. So step three is that there. Okay, final bit, explain why this mechanism is consistent with this rate equation here. So this is going to be very helpful. Um, so if we look at the, the way they've um, said about the speed of the steps or the rate of the steps. So step one's fast, step two's slow. So the sum of the first two steps is going to govern the rate of this reaction. And hopefully you can see that the, the sum of steps one and two involves... The, the species in the correct quantities as in the rate equation. So something like this will be fine. The sum of steps one and two involves the species in the correct quantities, it's really important, in the rate equation.